One of the goals I set out to accomplish in 2020 was to expand my knowledge with 3D printing filament, not just to know about these materials, but to actually print with them myself. I've mentioned quite a few times on the channel that the main materials I printed with in the six years I've been 3D printing are PLA, ABS, and PETG. And although those are fantastic materials and might be more than enough for any project you'll ever do, there is a lot of awesome materials out there. So last year we did print with quite a few different materials. A few of those were uh, carbon fiber nylon, ASA, polypropylene, and I think there is a fourth one that is slipping my mind right now, but if you are interested in any of those specific materials, I will place links down below in the description to where you can watch those videos. Well, in a similar fashion to last year, we are going to continue right along and print with new filaments for myself and new filaments for the channel this year. You guys really seem to be enjoying not only learning about these materials that are out there, but how to print with them as well. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a, a filament called High Impact Polystyrene, better known as HIPS. In today's video, we will take a look at what the material is, how it is used in the real world, um, why you might want to 3D print with it, what is required to 3D print with it, and then of course we will actually do some 3D printing and I will show you what the results look like. So I hope you guys are excited and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's take a look at how HIPS is actually used in the real world. Unlike polystyrene, HIPS is known for having very high impact strength and it is commonly used in thermoforming or injection molding and it is FDA compliant, which means that it is often found in kitchenware or packaging solutions. In its raw state, it is a matte white color and in general is a fairly inexpensive material. Some other great qualities about HIPS is that it is easily glued together, it takes very well to paint, and it can be 100% recycled. And the great thing about that is that through the recycled process, it actually does not degrade very much. So even if you're using recycled HIPS, it often retains much of the great qualities and characteristics that the material has in its first stage or its first use. Now that we've talked a bit about HIPS just in general, let's talk about it in the world of extrusion-based 3D printing. HIPS is by no means a new material, and there is a really good chance you've at least seen it or heard of it previously. More than likely, you've seen HIPS being recommended as a soluble support material, often paired with ABS. Although PVA is awesome to work as a dissolvable support material with PLA, it does not work very well with ABS, which is partially due to the fact that they print at two pretty different temperatures. Now again, HIPS was first introduced to me as a soluble support material for ABS, but with that being said, it is not a water soluble support material. So PVA, if you put it in water for the you know, right amount of time or you agitate it, eventually it will dissolve away and leave you with your PLA part. While with HIPS, if you dropped it in water and were expecting it to dissolve, you would be very disappointed. What it does do is it dissolves in a chemical called limonene. Limonene is a chemical that is found in citrus plants and you can often find it in cleaning agents. There are quite a few different types of limonene with some that are easier to get a hold of than the other and they're certainly not all created equal as they will not all uh, be able to break down hips, but the most common one that seems to be used is D-limonene. With that being said, I definitely would not want to use hips all the time as a soluble support material. With the amount of time it actually takes to break down a hips part, or really break down most soluble support materials in general, it would be a huge pain and constantly having to get limonene also is just another reason why Unless you have to use it as a support material for your specific geometries, I wouldn't opt to do it willingly. Now, although most people in the 3D printing world know HIPS as being just this kind of strange dissolvable material that's compatible with ABS, there's quite a few people that I've spoken with that are actually using HIPS as their primary material. And if you look at the characteristics of HIPS, there's really no surprise there that this does make a great candidate for functional parts. The closest material in the extrusion-based 3D printing world that you can compare HIPS to is ABS, as they both come from the same styrene family. And if you look at the properties between them, they've actually got a lot of the same properties, but in some instances, HIPS does have better impact strength than what some ABSs do have. Similar to ABS, HIPS does have a higher heat deflection and overall higher tensile strength than both PLA and PETG. 
Now, one downside to that and it being a styrene is that similar to ABS, it has a lot of the same qualities, both on the good side and on the bad side. And on the bad side, I'm talking about the odor that can come with printing ABS that a lot of people are very familiar with. Printing with hips does also produce an odor. Similar to ABS, when you're printing with hips, you will want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. One really nice property about hips is that unlike PLA or PETG, the tones or the color of the material is typically much more matte than the glossy PLA and PETG that is out there. And I have spoken with quite a few people that actually don't really like the glossiness that PLA or PETG has. And so depending on, again, whether you are producing a part that is going to be sold and you just want something that's high strength but doesn't have the gloss of PETG, well then again, hips can be a great option for that. One of the other reasons that I've been given from people that actually do print with hips over ABS when I've asked why, well, why don't you just print with ABS? And they've told me that in their experience, they feel that hips is actually easier to print with. They have a better time with the adhesion and they seem to have less issues with the shrinkage factor of hips over ABS. All right, now that we've covered some of the reasons why you might wanna print with this material, let's cover the hardware and what is required to do so. Luckily, there is not really anything super special that is required to print with hips. And in today's video, we are going to be using a pretty much stock BQB1 printer. The hot end on this printer is not all metal, which is fine since this material is going to print right around 240 Celsius. HIPS is also not abrasive, so as long as you don't get some that is uh, infused with carbon fiber or glass fiber, a standard brass nozzle will do just fine. And since it is not a flexible, you really shouldn't have any issue using whatever stock extruder that comes on your 3D printer. The only real prerequisite is that you have a heated bed that in my opinion needs to be able to hit at least 90 Celsius. Much like ABS, again, that does require a heated bed as well. To have proper adhesion and prevent your parts from warping as it's printing, having that heated bed is a must. Luckily, I think I just covered this in a video recently, but nearly all 3D printers that are coming out nowadays do have a heated bed, so hopefully you are covered as well. One thing that I also do highly recommend is if your 3D printer is not enclosed, you will likely want to enclose it unless you're printing very, very small parts. As the nozzle gets further and further away from the base of the printer and the parts begin to cool, you run the risk of a part splitting or delaminating because it is not cooling and shrinking evenly. So in this instance, I'm gonna use just the Wham Bam Hotbox, which is really convenient for the times I am printing with materials that uh, do need an enclosure. So again, unless you have your printer in a small closet space or somewhere where the heat is really well contained, I highly recommend printing inside of a closure, enclosure for parts of any substantial size. As for bed adhesion, there are a couple of options, but what I recommend is PEI. I'm actually going to be using the powder coated Wham Bam PEI bed that I just covered in last week's video. As for the filament, we are going to be using U-Hips Party Pink from Closed Loop Plastics. The reason why this is a really awesome company is that they upcycle plastic waste to create their filament, which is where the U comes from in U-Hips. In this case of Party Pink, the filament is entirely made up of what was once red Solo cups, which is what gives it that matte pink tone. They do have a pretty awesome video that goes over the process, and I really love the idea of creating less waste by upcycling something like red Solo cups. As an industry, I really hope to see both more implementation of recycled plastic into filament, and hopefully more ways that we can use both failed and extra printed parts. If you want to find out more about this filament or purchase some for yourself, I'll place links down below in the description. All right, now that we have a printer that can print with this material, it is time to actually print with hips. Now, there's nothing stopping you from printing nice looking trinkets or parts that you would be able to print with PLA in hips, but for the sake of this material, I wanted to find some functional parts that could potentially take advantage of the additional strength and heat deflection that hips does offer. So I hopped over to Thingiverse and I found a fan shroud for an E3D hot end. I've printed these both in PLA and PETG over the years and with time they do typically seem to warp even the PETG so I thought this would be a good first print. I hopped over to Kira and imported the model and as far as slicing settings go, I didn't really do anything too crazy. I printed up my standard 0.2 millimeter layer height with a 0.24 millimeter first layer. I used four to five bottom and four to five top layers, uh, as well as four to five shells. That's kind of the standard I run with, which might be overkill, but I really like not being able to see the infill through and produce fairly strong parts. As for the temperatures, I went with 240 Celsius on the hot end and 100 Celsius on the bed. Really the warmer the better for adhesion, but between 90 and 100 Celsius should be plenty. I've mentioned before that I am not one to push my 3D printers as far as speed goes, 
but I ran this material at 50 millimeters a second and I did include part cooling, but only at 25%. Part cooling can really increase your chances of warping when printing with a material like this, but there are some overhangs and I wanted to at least have a bit on. For adhesion, I went with my standard skirt and I hit slice. I watched the first few layers go down as I pretty much always do no matter what the machine is or what the material is to make sure that everything is going smoothly and then I stepped away and came back a couple of hours later to a completed part. I was really impressed to see that there was virtually zero warping at all and just a couple of months back, time has flown, but a couple of months back I printed with ASA and ASA seemed to warp quite a bit more than at least this hips did. So once that was done, I went ahead and printed out a Dremel attachment, a rotary Dremel attachment that goes on a, a Dremel that I thought would be a very cool use of using hips. And this also completed very nicely. There was a little bit of, um, I guess, slop or sag, if you will, on the overhangs, which I kind of attributed to just the 25% fan speed. And so in my mind, I was thinking that this is probably just how hips is going to look because of that. but. Um, in my head, I also thought that maybe it would be nice to uh, increase the layer cooling fan ever so slightly since I wasn't having any issues with warping. On the final part that I printed out, I found a power tool mount that basically drills into maybe a 2x4 or something in your garage, and then you can then mount a power tool. I believe it was designed specifically for a drill. Here in Southern California, the summertime can get very hot, and in the garage, I can definitely see some of the parts in, for sure in PLA, but maybe even PTG heading temperatures where it could melt, and also just having the added strength that the hips has, I thought would be a good use case for this. And so I went ahead and sliced it up. This was a little bit bigger than the other parts I had printed, and I hit print. And although this part did complete fine, this was the first print where I looked at it and saw that it seemed like there was a ton of stringing going on. And so I thought for a second, maybe I need to check into things a little bit further. So I hopped over to Cura, checked out my profile, and this is when I discovered that I made a whoopsie. And what I mean by that is I have a couple of Ender 3 profiles, and the Ender 3 profile that I thought that I had built this profile off of was actually not that profile. So I was using a profile that was built for the Ender 3 with a direct drive micro Swiss, which doesn't have very much retraction compared to a standard Ender 3, or in this case, the B1, which has a very similar Bowden type extrusion. And so all I ended up doing was changing the extrusion distance, distance from I think 1.5 millimeters to roughly six to 6.5 millimeters. And then I also increased the cooling from 25% to 35% and I hit print again. And it was a night and day difference. Not only was there zero stringing on the second part, the parts, the overhangs that I thought were looking kind of poor on the previous prints were way cleaner. So it definitely was a lesson learned to um, double check my profiles. And it's just crazy again to see that you know, you can spend all this time working with the hardware on your 3D printer, but sometimes it's just one or two variables in your slicing software. That's the difference between a eh, kind of okay looking print to a, wow, that's a really nice looking print. So, you know, lesson learned, but I, I do think that if I were to go back now and reprint those first two prints, which I may end up doing and just posting on Twitter or something like that, that they would actually look quite a bit cleaner because any of the overhangs would not have nearly as much uh, slop to them. Overall, I was really happy with the results of this material and I am planning on implementing it into some future projects. I actually have a really cool uh, speaker model that I found online that I'd like to print out and I think that hips would be great because I can travel around with it, put it in a garage, put it kind of anywhere and not worry about it warping. And I may be a little clumsy, so if it does end up getting dropped, hopefully it'll be able to take a little bit of an impact without just breaking. Now, I might not be the best judge of this because you can ask Aaron, I don't have the best sniffer, but in my experience printing with hips in this enclosure compared to something like ABS, I felt like it had much less odor. Now, this might be an instance similar to resins where some resins just smell worse than others. It might be similar. Maybe this uh, red solo cup or this variation of hips does not smell as much as other hips, but I printed with this stuff quite heavily for uh, the times I was testing this out. And again, I smelled very little and Erin also, unlike me, has a very sensitive nose and she didn't say anything, which is typically a good sign when I'm working on my crazy stuff in the living room. If you are looking for something that is a bit stronger and has a bit more heat resistance than PLA and PTG, but perhaps you're not a fan of printing with ABS due to, again, the smell, which in this instance wasn't as bad, or maybe you just haven't had good luck with adhesion, I will say also that 
The adhesion of this on the Wham Bam powder coated PEI beds was fantastic. I um, actually tried to, so with all the parts coming off of this, if I let them cool, I can just lift them off and it's like they were never stuck at all. Well, when a print finished on here, I actually tried to just grab it and remove it thinking, oh, it probably won't be stuck that hard. I couldn't get it off. Like the, PE, the, the powder coated bed was actually coming with it. So, um, Yes, is it partially the bed? I'm sure it's helping a lot with adhesion, but I'm telling you right now that from my experience printing with ABS in the past, this stuff is sticking a hell of a lot better, which is fantastic. The fact that this specific hips is fully recycled makes me love printing with it even more, and if for some reason the party pink is not for you, they also did release a, I believe it's nebula black filament as well, which is also a recycled U-hips material. And I can place, uh, I'll place links again to this stuff down below, but so that way you can take a look at the black filament as well. And this has been printing with hips. Uh, this has been high impact polystyrene. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys learned something. Please let me know in the comments down below if there's something that maybe I didn't cover or that you would like uh, answered as far as questions go. If I don't have the answer, I will do my best to figure out the answer for you. And if anybody out there has been printing with hips, again, I feel like this is one of these materials that's been around for a long time, but it's not nearly as talked about, but if you have printed with hips, please let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been like. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace guys.